Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good. He is good all of the time and worthy to be praised. He's the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God who loves us with a true agape love. And He wants to pour that unconditional love into our hearts. He wants to write it on our mind and keep our hearts and minds in perfect peace. We're at rest in Jesus. The Father has given us a place to sit, and we sit in Christ. I want us to know that our life is hid in Christ with God. There is nothing outside of you to fear. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Lord is with you. He's with us. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us, but to bring us into himself. <laughs> we have the Father, the one, the Father, the creator of all heaven and earth before us. He's called our names. He's called our names. And, and, and God so loved the world. Let, let me let's throw this one out. God so loved the world that whosoever would believe on his son, they would be saved. They would be delivered from judgment. They would get everlasting life. They would no longer perish. Hmm? No longer be separated from God forever. But they'd get the wisdom and the knowledge of and, and the understanding of who he is. We'd understand what we are. I, don't know, I was going to that place where we are all. God has called the whole world to him. So it's not, you know, just you and I. It's that person who didn't say yes to the Lord, that unbeliever who's listening right now. God called your name. If you're if you're listening, if your name is called. All you need to do is say yes. I believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, that he is the son of God who died and rose again. Hmm? And sit down and start learning of him. Sit down and start eating and drinking from the Bible that he's given us. This is the inspired, written word of God. He speaks into our hearts. And he directs our steps in life. He helps us in every single way that we are. We have this heart of ours, this mind of ours, this will of ours, this desire of ours to live. Some of us may think that we don't want to live, but I'm telling you that the, the Father of heaven and earth has good plans for your life. He has thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a successful life. Whatever desire you have, I mean, good desires that may have not have happened and it seems like everything in your life has gone wrong. He knows how to work all these things out for your good. But we need to learn who he is and trust what he has said. Whatever word he brings up to you from this word, this Bible, take that word and meditate on it. Learn of him. Learn of him. Learn of his ways. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 and 33, the Father knows what you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, God's way of living, and God's way of doing things. He knows how to work everything. He's got it all for you. He been, I, I want to throw out that Ephesians chapter 1, the Lord put every blessing you would need, everything you would need, he put it in heaven for you so that it couldn't get rusty and fall apart. <laughs> it couldn't get moldy and wear away. You, you, you know, the thief can't break in and steal it. If God took whatever it is you need and he put it in the heaven for you so that you could begin to speak what that what, what that thing is that you need and it's almost like rain that comes down from the sky 
it brings the, the what, what do you call that process that happens when see there's water here in the earth right and that water rises into the heavens <laughs> can i put it like that and this water forms a cloud and that cloud begins to drop the weight of the water the water gets all weighty up in there and it begins to fall out and we call that rain the Lord wants to give us the latter rain he wants to give us the rain so when we speak uh, when you have a desire and I'm talking about godly desires things that he knows you have need of and he's you're agreeing with his will he he's got nothing but good things in mind for you he wants to give you the desires of your heart when we speak that thing that we need and we keep on speaking that thing it's that's in the heaven it will come down it will form on this earth. We are made in the image of Christ. We're made in the image of God. He's made us in the image of his son. We are his. And what God says becomes. You could call yourself names all your life. Or you could believe all the evil that people say of you. And you know what happens? That forms in your life. It forms in your life. You begin to walk out an existence of thinking that you're no good. But that's not what God says about you. We need to learn what God says about us and say what he says. See, you are loved. And God poured his love into you. You are loving. <laughs> you are beautiful. These are words that are in the Bible. That's why we need to read the word and find out what we are. God will remind you of truth. He'll put it in the right place for you so that that word develops in you. I'm not just going everywhere. I'm telling you, our words have power. Our words have power. Why did I call this the matrix of the mind? Now I'm going to read the meaning of what a matrix is. And I, yeah, I know I spoke about this yesterday because I did a little bit of what I wanted to speak on for a conference yesterday and today. It's supposed to be today. And I couldn't get there. So I, I was talking about more than a woman because it's a woman's conference. And... There was something about going to the gym and seeing these words on the back of, of the machines that they use called the matrix. <laughs> and that word just kept sticking to me. Because here's the definition. A situation or surrounding substance which something else originates, develops, or is contained. Number two, the womb. Well, in a womb, you, you, a child is formed. At least that's what's supposed to happen. When the seed and the egg come to, together, a child is formed in the womb. It's developed and it's contained in an, an how do you say that word? An amniotic sac? I'm probably not saying that right. But it's in a sac of fluid. Creation is formed in a womb. Number three, it says the formative cells or tissue of a specialized structure such as hair, nail, claw, or tooth. Now, I'm saying that because our mind is a creative suite. And what we conceive of the world will be developed in this mind. It will show pictures. It will cause weight gain it will cause destruction it can cause life it can cause good it can cause bad it can cause evil it can kill 
steal, and destroy. Or it can, I'll say it again, it can have life. Whatever we conceive in this mind of ours affects the whole entire body. The thief has come for one purpose, and that is to steal, kill, and destroy. He will destroy your thought life so that you can't be that creative person that you are. So that you cannot go forward and work out your soul salvation in the awe of God, which will cause you to create great things in the earth. See, we're, we're God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to go about doing good works. If we would abide in Christ and abide in his word, great things are going to happen. It would happen. Great things would happen. That, that dew that I'm talking about that falls from the heaven, the rain that falls from the sky and lands on the ground, it happens because something goes up. Our words go up and they ascend into the heaven. And what we're imagining, what's going on inside the mind, and I, I'm going to use our mind because it's, it's the crippler. If we lean on our own understanding, if we lean on the flesh, if we lean on the hurt and the pain and the toxicity of this world, of the negative things, then we're going to have darkness in our thoughts. We're going to have confusion in our thoughts. We're not going to get any good thing. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He's not going to get what he asked for. She's not going to get what she asked for. The Lord said, ask for wisdom. That means he's going to give us understanding. He's going to give us clarity. He's going to give us instruction. Because we're not leaning on our understanding, on what we see with our physical eyes or what we hear with our ears. We're leaning on the Lord and we're discerning things by the Spirit of God, not by how we feel. Not by what somebody else is doing. Don't be blinded by the God of this world. Don't be blinded by the God of this world. Be be the children of light to be filled with the light of God is clarity it's understanding it's, it's humbleness see you know that the Lord is going to work whatever situation out together for your good even if you have to have this patience with long suffering you, you, you know long-suffering and patience come together. I meant long-suffering with joy. It, it hurts. It's painful. Yet the Lord is upholding you in His hands. You, you've got strength to go through the situation and not yell at it, kick at it, scream at it, fall apart over it, get depressed over it, kill somebody over it. You're not going to do any of these things, but you're going to keep on speaking the word of life to the situations and circumstances around you. We're in the womb of Christ. You can say that. We're in his womb. We're, we're being formed. We're being created in the image of the Son of God. See, it's the Lord who keeps us in perfect peace. I know it sounds like I'm going everywhere, but I'm, I'm not really not trying to. I'm, I want us to come into a place where we can be what we are and do what we do in this earth while we're here. We're being formed into the image of Christ. Every day that we get up and we cast all of our cares before the Lord, we're picking up what He said and we're saying what our Father is saying. And as we keep on saying what He's saying, if when we agree with what He said, we form an image in the mind. We have this expectation, this hope that what He said, He will also do it. 
and because we are in agreement it will form on this earth huh. and Mary, Mary popped into my mind again see Mary believe what Gabriel said what the angels said to Mary she took those words they were the words of God she believed the words and she conceived in her womb by the Holy Spirit whom we all have and gave birth to that son she gave birth to a son the son of God the holy thing <laughs> the one who saved us and delivered the world if they would hear it if they would see it you know how they need to see it they need to see it through us they they need to see Jesus through us through our lives and how we live I'm casting everything before him everything that could disrupt my my creative suite my thought patterns here and cause me to lean on my own understanding I'm casting every care I have before the Lord and I'm listening for his voice his still small voice I, I'm listening for the voice of the Almighty God to be able to get up and do the work that needs to be done today whatever is good and whatever is lovely these are the things I want to feast on in my mind so that the creative suite that he gave me can can function in the way that it's supposed to I wanted to go about doing good so that others can get up and be strengthened in the Lord and walk waiting for the Jesus to come waiting to hear his voice we're gonna be caught up with him in the clouds we're gonna get caught up with the Lord don't be so distracted by the God of this world and the people that follow him that you're distraught and miserable There's so many things I, I can bring into this, this talk right now you're delivered and you've been set free this this mind of ours is a creative suite and if we stop flooding it with darkness we sit down and I'm here I'm going I'm going there okay we sit down and we watch the news and we watch all these sitcoms and old TV shows and we're filling ourselves with people that are not saved and their imaginations we're filling ourselves with their imaginations with unsaved people's imaginations think about it if ever there was a fast there needs to be a fast from all social media and anything that plugs uh, anything that feeds you death anything that floods your mind with darkness with anything that floods your mind with somebody else's sin I want clarity see there's so much to do right now right now is the time to get busy with the Lord's business Jesus is coming I went to a um, an outreach on Thursday and there was a young man that was so consumed with this world he said I've been to church I was in church when I was a kid I, I, I he loves God but that wasn't what was coming out of his mouth what was coming out of his mouth was how much he was blinded by the God of this world with the things that are going on in this world he's so distraught and so worried so fearful so filled with all oh, contempt for it and I told him look the devil has a deadline <laughs> revelations verse 20 and 10 I said a few other things to him but I really got to him to the point where he went up to the line he went up to the prayer line and got delivered got freed from what the stronghold was for him and all he wanted to do after that was help he he's, I just want to help show me what I can do show me how I can put my hands to work 
I want to, this is a good thing, this is a good thing, I need this. Because I told him, you're a worker, get to work. I think that's one of my main motives, one of my pet peeves, is we need to be busy about God's business, going about doing good like Jesus. You might not be the preacher that stands on the street corner yelling, you know, yelling out and speaking the gospel to everybody, but there's, you, you are love. And whatever work the Lord has given you to do, you do it as unto the Lord. Whatever good thing, whatever creative thing he's given you to do it. We need you. Don't hold back. Be free. I, it is so imperative. It's so, so right now that we would be like the sun, that we would be ready for the sound of his voice. That's why I'm talking about these things that we're allowing to rule our heart and mind. You can't live in fear of this world. You can't be living. We cannot live in the understanding, the unfruitful understanding. Here, Romans chapter 5. Let me start in verse 9. Where's 9? For this light within you produces only what is good, right, and true. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let's let's go up a little further, and I'm going to be done. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey Him. Don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good, right, and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful to even talk about. I want to put in here. It is shameful to even sit down and imagine. what ungodly people do in secret but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them for the light makes everything visible this is why i said awake O sleeper arise from the dead and christ will give you light you're a light of the world you're a city that cannot be hid matthew chapter six <laughs> now that might be chapter five but you're a light of the world you're 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 something that you are so visible before everybody that walks on this earth you're visible you're heard you're seen and when we shine as lights in this world people get saved they they they're in a dark place they see the spark of light that they they can't resist they don't want to stay in depression anymore when there's light they don't want to kill somebody. They don't want to kill themselves when they see light. That's why we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to understand and know our Father. And know what Jesus has done for us. If we don't know the gospel, the good news that why, I mean, that God sent his son, if we don't understand the intimacy, the fellowship that we have with him, how can we produce a good work in this earth? Verse 13. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life instead be filled with the holy spirit singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music in to the lord making music to the lord in your hearts that's intimacy that's loving god even while everything else is crazy around you 
you're so in awe with him that nothing else matters. You know who's carrying you. You know who's with you. You know who's got you. The one who created the world and all that there is in it. And you have a part in this. Keep your mind clear by keeping it on Christ. By always giving everything. Being that open book before God. There's no thought, no feeling. No way, nothing, nothing about you that the Father doesn't know that he has not seen. Be bare before him. Because he's the one that we have to give an account to when this is all finished. So why not make account of everything now and say, here I am, Lord. I know that you work everything out together for my good. I love you. Here I am. Here's my heart. Here's my mind. Here's my hands. Here's my feet. Lead me in the way that I should go. And give me understanding. He hears us. He knows us. Believe me, he will work everything out together for your good. Cast every care you have on him. Be that open book. Have a song in your heart. When we meditate on the right things, those songs come up automatically. Verse 18, don't be drunk with wine because there, that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and furthermore submit to one another out of reverence for Christ that's where I end this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson I get the word in your face international get the word in your face and love God because he loves you he loves us with a true agape love. And he wants to pour the knowledge of his will and understanding in us. Let go of what you hate. Huh? Let go of that situation and that circumstance. If you feel like you can't forgive anybody, then I'm telling you, look to the Lord and tell him that. Say, Lord, I'm having a hard time forgiving, but I want to forgive like you forgive. I want to remain in your love. Help me. He sees the stronghold. He sees the yoke and the burden on your shoulders. He sees the mess in your mind. And he's able to clean it up. Without drugs. <laughs> without alcohol. Without somebody else being that wonderful. We have a wonderful counselor. We have the Prince of Peace. We have the Almighty God. It's that Isaiah chapter 9 all this in us for us we are clean and clear we have a clear conscience because everything that we are it rests in Christ and God is for us <laughs> and if God be for us who can be against us nothing not anything Again, this is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. God loves you. And so do I. Bye-bye.